couple of young line, young linebackers coming in, Moses Walker, Abram Wright, guys who got some run in the yeah. in the bowl game. Just what steps have you seen from those guys in the offseason and just what kind of role do you project they could have if, next season if they keep on this uh, trajectory? Yeah, I know. I think the development is just keeping keeping going, and they're, they're on the rise right now. I mean, they did a great job late in the year. I mean, after Powell went out against Indiana, we had to – kind of do a bunch of things with a lot of guys playing a bunch of positions. And, uh, you know, those two specifically, Moses and Abram, they just, they're just continuing to get better. I mean, um, for me, linebackers, they always struggle to see it in the beginning. Like when they get to this level, it's just always a struggle. It's just so much faster in the box. And uh, once it starts to slow down, um, which is kind of where they're at, um, you know, now they're able to see things more on, like, the level that I would say a Powell and, you know, Jennings was and where Mo Ture is now. I mean, if we, if we look back – you know, when Mo first made the switch, there were some, some moments there. But they're getting better, and uh, I love the group. It's a fun group. Uh, it's such a great recruited group. They're all great people, and it's just uh, it's fun every day. You were able to keep a lot of guys from last year. It's not usual now with this transfer portal stuff. What do you think was key to keeping that, that defense together and bringing all these guys back? Yeah, I think it starts at the top, right? It's the culture that we have. Um, it's the way coach sets the tone. You know, our defense is a branch off that FTC culture. And um, I think it's just an environment that young men really like being a part of. Um, and when it comes time for that decision, I think they just look at what they could be around. Um, the unknown is out there, right? And uh, I think just the, the what they're going to get every day from us, um, I think, is why. And I think we're just, um, like I said, a program on the rise, a defense on the rise, and we're just looking to take the next step. Do you consider yourself an aggressive defensive coordinator in terms of blitz and um, an aggressive defensive style? Yeah, I think um, according to the situation in the game, I think that always depends. Certainly, um, we're an aggressive style with the way that we uh, teach our fundamentals, right? Our D-line, our linebackers, our secondary is very aggressive with the way we play. Um, we press a lot. Um, so I think just our – our regular base stuff is that way. And then certainly the pressure things game to game. Um, you know, I can look back over the last two years I've been here, there's been different games where we've been up in the 40s and there's been games where we've been down in the, you know, below 10%. So I think it just depends. But I think the way we teach our base fundamentals and the way we run a program from the family trust job is that's, that's aggressive to start. Um, so I think it starts there and then it kind of trickles down to everything else. What have your impressions been of uh, Malcolm so far and, and what he's brought to you guys? It's great, man. I think. Listen, the first thing you know about Malcolm is just he's an unbelievable person, um, and I think that's something that goes missed now with this transfer portal. You can miss easily. Um, guys might be looking for different things, but you know him, um, his family, um, everyone's just they fit with us, and we knew that when he visited. And I'm just so excited about that part. That's why I wasn't even worried about. I mean, I, listen, he, he wouldn't be here if he couldn't play. Um, but uh, which makes it even better is he connects with us. And I think that's the ultimate part of well, the relationship is the connection. And I'm super excited. Just started to see him, you know, three practices, but certainly someone that's going to help us big time. Added linebackers, linebacker coach to your title now with uh, Corey going to Minnesota. Does yeah. that change anything at all about your job, what you do in practice field and stuff like that? Yeah, it's, it's fun being back. You know, when I coordinated at Maine, um, I was the linebacker coach. And then obviously when I got here, um, we were able to hire Corey, and you guys know my relationship with Corey. I love the guy, and uh, we've always been connected. So what I was thinking, he was thinking, and vice versa. So I didn't really have to, to worry too much about that. But, yeah, it changes. I think, um, you know, with our staff and, and everything, that the responsibilities and that, I'll be tied up with doing more linebacker stuff. But, you know, Coach channel has been great with me, and we've, we've developed our staff into what the best 2024 staff is. And, and like I said, I love being with the group. You know, I was in the middle with the Stars. It's kind of like an outside linebacker. Um, I'm kind of dead in the middle now, so it's good. But just a relationship with those guys, being in there every day, I've loved every minute of it. Moses Walker, big recruit, had the injury, obviously. What's his progression been like, and what's your expectations for him? It's been awesome. I mean, since I first got here, like I said in the beginning, usually a linebacker that's young, they start to move too slow, right, because they can't see it yet. And then they go really fast because they're starting to see it. Now he's getting into the moment where he can go faster, he can go slow. And that's the development me to a linebacker. Uh, he comes in every day. He works. Um, he's always he's always someone that really pays attention in meetings. He's locked in. He sits right to the right of me. He, and um, we need him. Like he knows that. We know that. He may, he he played at the end of the year last year and got some really really good time in the bowl game and games before that. And um, you know, for me, I know as someone that watches guys play for the first time, my trust starts to build. And I don't even think now when he when he goes in. 
You know, it's just like he's, he's one of the guys. And that's where I know that someone's getting to the point where they're about to break out. And I'm just super excited for him. He battled his uh, you-know-what off coming back from the injury. You know, him and Mo were together in that whole thing. And their bond is tight. And I think it's made him even better now, you know, playing that position and being there with each other. I guess when you look at the returner, the number of returners, there aren't a, a whole lot of openings, uh, yeah. a lot of playing time available for younger guys. But you brought in some really good recruits. Kaj Sanders comes off the top of my mind. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a vision for you know these incoming freshmen and getting them on the field? Um, could you see any of those guys kind of contributing early? Yeah, I think right now, obviously they're 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 getting used to the speed um, and everything that's going on. But listen, you, you mentioned Kaj has, has flashed a couple times here over the first three days. I mean, he has. He just has natural uh, instinctive ability, which don't have anything to do with me. Don't have anything to do with Coach Drew. So that was someone gave him that. Um, whoever he believes in gave him that. So uh, we're here to develop him, all those young guys. Uh, and, again, I'll go back to the point, like, our recruiting has taken off because we just have great people. Like, again, like, we're usually – Coach Allen's going to do a really good job uh, of not letting someone in here that can't play football. Like, that's not really the question. Any tape that comes across my desk, they're going to be solid players. And now I think we do an awesome job of just weeding through who fits us. And I think every freshman fits us. Kyle Sanders is a Jersey kid. He fits us, he's home. And now he's showing us you know, what he did at Bergen and now he's gonna come here and do it here. So I'm excited about the whole freshman class just from the standpoint of like, we don't have to deal with a lot of stuff with them. The transition of them you know, being on time, all those things have been, have been really, really smooth. And that's a credit to Jeff Jones and all those you know, player development guys to help them with that. And the reason I mention all that is because like, they can't do on the field if they can't get that right. And you know, for someone like him and all those young guys, I'm just, I'm just super excited that they're a part of us so early and they're so, their future is so bright that now this development stage and what we're going through is just gonna, it's gonna be through the roof. Two more. What are your uh, expectations for Aaron Lewis going into next season? Because at the end of last season, he was saying that one of his reasons to come back was that he felt like he didn't play up to the level that he mm -hmm. felt he was capable of. So I guess, what do you kind of expect from him this year? And what have you seen from him this off season as he rises to that level? Yeah, I think, you know, first and foremost, uh, you know, that kind of speaks to who he is. Right? How many kids get up and tell, tell people that I didn't play well? especially in 2024 when it's about me, 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 me. Um, so that just tells you who he is. And, and again, the culture that we have, guys wanting to come back, you know, all those things. So, listen, I'm looking for Aaron to be Aaron. I I've seen Aaron impact this program every day, whether we're playing football or not, his energy, what he brings. And for him, you know, it's going to start the weight room and all those kinds of things with his body and getting everything right, getting him healthy. And then for him, he sets the tone for us. You know, he – just because uh, the no sacks and all that production, like he, he, his pressure rate is where we need it to be, and we just got to keep rising it. And now with Coach Farrell and Coach Camp and all those guys in there, um, just looking for him to, to be who he is. Like he don't have to do anything special. He wants to take his game to the next level, and that's what we're here to do for him. And uh, I know he's going to do that. I know that he's going to die trying, um, and that's the best part about Aaron. Joe, we asked you a lot about the guys who decided to come back. You had opportunities this offseason, and you renewed your contract, and you decided to come back. Take me through the offseason for you on a personal level and why you decided to extend your time here at Rutgers. Yeah, again, I go back to kind of what I answered with the players. Like, I love being here. Like, again, I'm from here. right? I grew up in Bergen County. Um, the culture of Jersey made me who I am, right? Um, you know, driving fast and being upset with people and – being in a rush and doing all those things we love to do, right? Um, you know, I, I was actually back home last weekend at the house I grew up in. You know, there's nothing like getting up, going to the bagel shop where I used to go when I was a little kid. And just all those things mean so much to me. Um, and ultimately, I believe in coach. Like, again, when you believe in people and you have a connection with people, that's the most powerful thing. I tell guys in recruiting all the time, like, the reason you decide to come here is because you believe in us. And I believe in Coach Ciano. I believe in this place. Um, it's great for my family, um, and it's just different. Like, we always say we're going to be different. Like, Jersey's different, and uh, that fits with us. That fits with this defense, and that's why I love being here. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.